guys, Jenny with On Fire Fit, and I'm back with Pastor Jim. We are doing more dreams because we love dreams. We love how God gives us messages and a lot of encouragement through dreams. So I hope that you will take away something from this. It might not be your dream, but that doesn't matter because I think a lot of the concepts apply, and that is what I think is really cool about dreams. I've talked about this before, but when we are in a state of kind of non-consciousness, that is a lot of times when we have no control finally. <laughs> and I think that's when God can kind of download some messages. And so we're having some fun talking through some dreams that have been presented to us. So Pastor Jim, Thank you for doing this with me again. Oh, no problem. No problem. I love to do this. Um, I think it's just so uh, enlightening. I mean, it really, it really does display how much God loves us and wants to interact with us. You know, that he, he gives us these dreams while we're asleep, while our brains are not, you know, cluttered up with other things you know he, that's his time to get in there with a very sharp pointed you know listen up and and you know i got i got a message for you um so you know i, I think it's important i think it's good that we are doing this and i hopefully it'll encourage people to uh, really look into their dreams and and you know hopefully they'll send them to us and and we'll get a a crack at doing some interpretation with. So do you have one for us today? I do. Um, and before I do say that, let me say a couple of things, because we were talking offline a second ago about if you don't write it down, how it escapes you. So <laughs> definitely, I encourage you to either make a voice memo for yourself or write it down. A lot of times I will uh, tell Pastor Jim in like a voice memo, right away so i don't forget so that's one thing you know don't don't let it slip away because even if you think you're going to remember we tend to forget and then the other thing i was going to say too is sometimes when you feel like you should be sleeping and you're awake don't get frustrated by that either because i think a lot of times that's when god talks to me as well and so instead of being frustrated by it i'll be like okay lord what do you want to tell me? What are we talking about? Because now I'm your captive audience. <laughs> it's one in the morning. Um, and a lot of times, you know, I kind of get a message and move on and go back to sleep. So anyway, that's just like sort of a little side tip that um, it took me a long time to come to that conclusion because I just maybe I'm a little bit thick headed about stuff like that, but it did take me a little while until I finally realized this might actually be God's best time to talk to me when I'm so busy during the day. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I am going to start off with we had a, a few different dreams, but I want to start off with one that a female friend of mine was telling me about, and I really loved the dream because this is something that whether or not you know the person, this definitely is something that I think the message is fairly clear, but I'm also going to let Pastor Jim kind of uh, give the interpretation of this. But there were two dreams that were kind of side by side on the same night, but they were unrelated. And the first dream was she was driving and I was the passenger. And I think that it's interesting because normally I'm the one driving. And so in that case, I think that by itself is usually pretty significant. We talk about driving dreams and things like that. So do you want to start with that one? Sure, sure. That I, I love, you know, driving. Any, anytime there's a driving dream, it's to me, it's very significant because it's that's about someone either if they are driving them taking control in a situation where maybe they wouldn't have in the past or if they're not driving then who is and who has that control and you know um 
yeah, I, I love driving dreams. So go ahead, tell us that one. Yep, yep. So that dream, there wasn't a whole lot to it. It was kind of um, a very short little little dream, but she was driving. She felt very good in that position. And then we ended up in a field and a little baby cow came up to the window and smiled at us. <laughs> Smiling baby cows. Wow. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's a first. Um, okay. Well, like you say, not a lot in that dream, but really there is a lot in that dream. So, you know, you say you were the one that typically drives. So apparently she was comfortable in driving and, and, and releasing you from responsibility. Um, so I think that's significant. And then, you know, the baby cow, you know, God sometimes just gives us cute little things, you know, to, you know, maybe, maybe the cow was God that, that was, you know, just smiling at her for finally being comfortable enough to take control and to be, feel good in that control. So. That's about yeah. all I have on that one. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so the other dream that was the same night that she was telling me about, I felt like it did tie nicely into that dream. So she was telling me about something you may or may not be familiar with, but it's called duck diving. So when an ocean wave is coming at you and you're standing there in the ocean, you don't want to just get pummeled by that wave so you dive under it and they call that duck diving and so she talked about how there were tons of people getting pummeled by the waves but she did a duck dive under the wave and she was sitting down at the bottom and looking up and she could see all the people with the chaos of the waves and she sat down there and just watched and felt very peaceful. And, you know, I guess in real life, I'd be like terrified that I'm like, how long am I going to be down here? And I I'm not getting air or something. But none of that was a part of that. It was a very calm place that she was with no fear. Mm -hmm. And it was like she had recognized this was the answer to all of that going on and that a lot of people were not getting that message or didn't realize that that's what they needed to do to, to do too. So. Yeah. So swimming dreams, flying dreams, you know, um, anything where you're moving very fluidly, you know, um, that generally has to do with freedom. So, you know, and the ocean is hugely significant. I, I, I'm very aware of, of duck diving. Um, I, I grew up on the East Coast and spent a lot of time in the ocean uh, when I was growing up. So I'm fully aware of that. And, and you know, I've seen horrible rip currents and, and terrible waves. And, uh, and I've had a few uh, beach rash <laughs> in my day as well. So, um yeah, that, that's that's a great dream and in the fact that, you know, the people, the world around her are being, you know, rolled and turmoil and turmoil and, and tumbled by these by these waves. But yet she has the wisdom and the freedom to dive under and to sit peacefully surrounded by the water the water represents the holy spirit the water is you know kind of a, you know the ocean itself is a very spiritual surrounding so you know she felt comfortable sitting in that place and just seeing the turmoil of the people above her who didn't have the wisdom didn't have the the the, the comfort of sitting surrounded by the Holy Spirit in a peaceful place while, you know, all that turmoil is going on. So 
I think, you know, when you combine those two dreams together, um, I think that's a very uh, encouraging um, dream, you know, that God's telling uh, this, this woman, you know, that, that he's proud of her for her growth and for, you know, the fact that she can now be peaceful and take control and be, and be good, you know, with, with having control and, um, you know, sitting peacefully surrounded by the spirit while the world is in chaos around her. Um, yeah, I, I, ocean dreams, water dreams, swimming dreams, flying dreams, you know, uh, I love those because they all speak about, you know, freedom and, you know, the, the our ability to uh, really trust, right? So what do you, what do you, what do you have on those? Yeah, definitely. I feel like, I mean, with the specifics of this person, of course, that I know, um, it's even more encouraging just knowing, you know, that she's dealt with a lot of stress, anxiety, and kind of like performance related issues, like someone else I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so that that sense of uh, peace and knowing, like you said, that wisdom, um, despite all of this stuff going on, is kind of a, a huge um, transformation or a big step in a mm -hmm. direction that I think that a lot of times we may go through things in life and not really see that those effects or we might not see that transformation and then i think sometimes a dream like that it just reminds you that oh wow you know i am really changing because i know with this woman there there's a history of a lot of nightmares a lot of nightmares you know and not good dreams and so it's like wow here we are at a point where there you're seeing some of the benefit of the growth and everything and you know the hard work that you know yeah. has taken place and a lot of the hard work that's taken place has been in rest and mm -hmm. sitting still mm -hmm. <laughs> and not doing you know and so that part of the dream is significant too just that you don't necessarily have to fight these waves or deal with the, you know, you can just sit in peace knowing this is where I belong, you know, and I think that's, that's significant as well. Absolutely. It reminds me of Jesus that slept in the boat, you know, in the middle of the storm and all of the disciples are freaking out, you know, you know, yep. master, master, we're going to, we're, you know, we're going to perish in this storm. Don't you care? And he's like, yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, there, there's a saying that, you know, you're, you're only, how's it go? You're, you're only as, as, um, what's the word? Confident, I guess, as the storm that you can sleep through, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's really and, and to, you know, to end it up, I don't know which dream came first, but, you know, to end it up with God, you know, showing up like a cow, smiling at you. <laughs> um, yeah, if I was her, I would be, I would be ecstatic with those couple of dreams because that's, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's great. Um, okay, so let's talk about a different dream. Okay. That was um, a gentleman had sent to me and he talked about how he saw his psychiatrist in a location that he normally wouldn't have. I guess she was coming out of a grocery store or something, but she was, you know, not close to where her clinic is or anything like that. And he had the go over this grassy knoll to get to her and 
when he did, he congratulated her on a study that she had published, which, you know, he said in real life that had not really happened, but that was part of the dream. And so he was congratulating her. And then he said that he wanted to write her biography. And then he had to cross this grassy knoll again, I believe. So I think I got all the parts to that dream. So um, I think there's a lot of significance in those. Um, but let's talk initially about the grassy knoll. You know, that's an obstacle. And, and in dreams where there's obstacles that you have to overcome or, or go over or go through or whatever, you know, that's significant. There's, there's a reason for the obstacle and there's a reason for you overcoming the obstacle. So to me, my first thoughts are, you know, he, he sees someone who he holds in high regard. Right. Um, there's a significance in, in this person. So he recognizes that, right, a as a significant person. Um, and, and then he pursues this person over a, a barrier, over, a you know, some obstacle, a grassy knoll. Um, and then he honors her you know, with, with accolades for, you know, doing this great thing and, and being that, you know, she's his psychiatrist, you know, maybe the accolade actually speaks to the, the progress that they've made together, you know. Um, remind me to talk about the psychiatrist at the end, you know, why, what, what that, because that just popped in here. Um, but then, you know, not only does he recognize, he, he, he gives praise and, and, you know, accolades for doing this great thing, but then he offers service, right? He says, I want to write your biography. Um, I think that's significant. I think that, you know, this person apparently is on a journey, Right. Let's get into the psychiatrist thing. You know, a psychiatrist is somebody who, who you engage to help you unlock the mysteries of your mind, the mysteries of your heart, right? Um, I think that lines up with God, right? You know, I don't have a psychiatrist. You know, if I have a mystery in my mind or a mystery in my heart, I ask God. You know, he and the Holy Spirit do that for me. You know, thank God that, you know, I don't have anything significant enough that I had. You know, there's nothing wrong with seeking professional help if you have an issue. I mean, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, you know, by God's grace, I don't. So if I have something that I need to work on, I go to God. Um, but I think maybe this person's on a journey with God, recognized God, recognized, you know, the, the person that they're on the journey with, had to overcome a barrier, an obstacle to get to that person, you know, praised and, and gave accolades to the person, and then offered himself up in service. Um, I think that's a beautiful metaphor of uh, our life in Christ, our life with God. Um, I really think, you know, and I don't know if this person, you know, if they're Christian or, or whatever, um, but if they're not, you know, <laughs> maybe that's God saying, hey, you know, I, I'm, you know, if, even if you're not doing this with me, I'm beside you in this journey with your psychiatrist. Um, you know, Cause there's definite parallels there. 
just like Jesus used parables to teach. And a parable is nothing more than a spiritual parallel to a physical reality, right? Um, I, I see this as almost a parable dream, you know? Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah. That, Whoever that's sent that, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a, a good, I knew it had a good, it had a good feeling to it, mm -hmm. but I, I like how you interpreted that and it did make sense to me. I do think that it felt to me like a, I don't know if you want to call it a full circle or what the word is, but it almost feels like, you know, at the outset, this person probably sought the psychiatrist for help. The psychiatrist obviously knows what they're doing if they, you know, have been able to help this person as well as publishing a study and whatnot. But now he is at the point where he actually can kind of use what he's learned and share with the world. You know, it's almost like I'm I'm so far along in this process that now I have a message that I can to give out. And I like how you, you talked about the praise and then the act of service, because I think those do come out of, you know, a, a good mental health as well, you know, when we're able to be of service to others. I mean, I actually think, and this is totally a tangent, maybe not related exactly, but I do really think that a lot of our mental health concerns nowadays is because we don't have a lot of acts of service. I think if we got out and did more acts of service, we would probably have better mental health in general, you know, but um, like I said, that's kind of a tangent, but I do think that the, this whole dream felt very much like that um, kind of an obstacle trying to get over that grassy knoll and um, this gentleman had told me that that felt very significant in the dream that grassy knoll and i do think that those things matter when something feels particularly particularly significant in a dream i think we are supposed to pay attention to that yeah so. i do too um you know i've had a lot of dreams where there's been doors or walls or you know different things um and they're always significant to, you know, whether you can overcome that or not. But speaking to your acts of service and how that affects our mental health, I think you're 100 percent correct. Um, you know, when when we spend time working with helping, you know, other people. We kind of get a dopamine hit, you know, um, but the focus isn't on us, it's on them. You know, I think what, when we don't do those things, when, you know, that's when we turn inward. That's when we spend far too much time looking into ourselves and what's wrong with me, you know, uh, it, it's, it's much better to reach out and to help people, you know. And, and I think that's one of the reasons why we're doing this, this video series is, to try to reach out and to help people make sense of something that maybe didn't make sense to them before. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love doing this. Oh, I do too. And, and I think you said something and I don't remember if it had been on the previous dream video or not, but you mentioned something before to me about never hearing a bad dream. Yeah. I, I, I I've interpreted a lot of dreams over you know the years, and you know, certainly you and I have interpreted a lot of each other's dreams. Um, I think I don't know that I've ever heard a dream, and I'm not. This isn't going out as a challenge, people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to yeah. open up the floodgates. Yeah. yeah no, I, I've never heard a dream that didn't have a positive outcome or a positive message or, you know, something uplifting in it, even if it was a, a, a warning dream, 
right? A, a dream that said, you know, don't go down that path. Don't take that job. Don't, you know, um, you know, the, the positive side of that is don't take that job or don't go down that path because God has something better for you. Right. There's there's something else out there for you. You know, if, if you know, if you have this dream again, turn around look behind, you You know, see, see, see what you missed, because there's, you know, there's something better. Um, that's what I meant. You know, uh, certainly people do have nightmares and, you know, yeah. horrible things. And, and, you know, you've heard some of my crazy, horrible, yeah. gory dreams, you know, and all of them have had positive interpretations and, and great interpretations. So, you know, um, but yeah, we're definitely not offering up a challenge to you know, give, us, <laughs> give us your most screwed up, you know, horrible dream and see what we can make positive out of it. You know, that's, that's yeah, not no, what no. we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, and I think the reason that I brought that up is because I do think that a lot of times people have kind of recurring nightmares, recurring mm -hmm. dreams that are scary or they are they're fearful when they wake up. And I think the point is not so much that we're trying to twist things into always a positive message, but that a lot of times they do have, like you said, a warning attached, or it might be a great way to say, oh, I need to go in a new direction. So those are those turn out to be positive. So even if you have um, dreams that are not necessarily on the surface looking like they're positive, there may be a message in there that is trying to kind of open you in, in, into a new direction. You know, I think that there's some dreams that people probably have that are kind of processing past trauma. And I wouldn't necessarily say, you know, you need to keep reliving that or something, but I do wonder, you know, where, where the message could be sometimes, and I'm just kind of over generalizing right now, so I am certainly not trying to minimize anything anybody has ever gone through. But, you know, there's that sense sometimes of having to maybe forgive somebody in real life that hurt you. And it's not to release them necessarily from, you know, what they did or the wrong or whatever, but it's to release them from your con conscious and subconscious that is to to make you free you know so i think sometimes even those recurring nightmares might be a prodding or a prompting to kind of we need to to move in a direction that will release that from you and you know so anyway i'm not trying to get too heavy with all of that but i do think a lot of times people do have recurring nightmares and they they can, you know, you carry those feelings sometimes for a while during the day, but if, if you can possibly look at it with a positive angle, you don't have to carry that heaviness with you. Yeah, absolutely. Sense. Yeah, absolutely. Let me, let me share real quickly, just a, a reoccurring nightmare that I had from my early childhood all the way up into, you know, my twenties. Uh, I grew up in a very old house. Um, built in 1790s and upstairs on the third floor we had these dormers and those dormers had these little closets built into them um, just these little tiny you know three foot by two foot doors with these little tiny closets and I had a dream from the time I was you know could even remember that I had a dream that that Dorm, one particular dormer in that third floor was a portal to hell. And that demons or the devil himself or whoever would come and grab me and drag me up the steps because we slept on the second floor, up the steps to the third floor and try to drag me into that dormer. And I could see down the steps into that dormer um, and there was flames and fire and, you know, all kinds of just evil things on the steps. And they never got me. They never took me down there, right? They never went down. I never went down the steps. I never got through the threshold of the door. I always got free. 
But as I was a child, I would wake up terrified, you know, and I never wanted to go up to the third floor. And I never, ever, you know, it wasn't until I was in my teens that I ever even opened that door up to look, you know. Um, there was nothing in there, of course. But uh, and, and then finally, you know, I started to learn about the spirit realm. I started to learn, you know, that heaven and hell are real and. And there is a spirit realm on this earth and, and things are real and, and active in those areas. And I think about the time that I started to have those revelations and I started to study about it in the Bible and you know go to classes on you know deliverance training and all that stuff, the dreams went away. I think it was just God trying to show me that this is real. You know, there are real evil. There is real evil in this world. And, you know, you're not going to be affected by it. They're never going to get you through the threshold. But you need to recognize it and, and realize that it's there. So, you know, that's positive to a thing that tormented me, you know, for 15 years, probably, maybe even more. Um, yeah, so, you know. If you have reoccurring dreams or reoccurring nightmares or whatever, let us know. I mean, you know, let us let us ask God and 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 find out what the real truth behind it is, because um, it's probably not as terrifying as you think it is. Yeah, yeah good. Wonderful. Well, I think we can wrap it up today, but we are going to continue with our dreams and so if you have a dream or like he said recurring dream or a nightmare even we would love to hear about it and so just send it you can send it to my email on firefit at gmail.com or on firefit team at gmail.com we will definitely get to that so thank you so much for being a part of this thank you pastor jim for doing this with me it's always a pleasure yeah you're welcome you're welcome thank you for including me in this this is it's yeah. a lot of fun I, I i enjoy this so thank you very much yeah thank you yep so we will see you guys next time and live on fire